So what if you wanted your game to have a retro feeling? Like this. Because that's what we are going to see today, how to create a retro effect in Unity. Since my last tutorial was about pixel art effects, I think this one comes at the right time. By the way guys, we are developing Rabbit's Tail and Metroidvania game, make sure to check out the links below to follow the development. And if you want to get your hands on this project, it's all available on my Patreon page. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So one of the first steps of the retro shader is to make everything pixelated. And it's surprisingly easy to transform an entire scenario into pixel art. So in your camera, down here in the output, we want to feed a render texture, pixelated render texture. So with right click I'm going to create a render texture, I'm gonna call it the pixelated render texture and let's assign this to the output texture of our camera. Basically now the camera will paint that texture with whatever is seeing. Probably now in your game window you will see a no camera rendering warning. You can disable it up here on this three dotted icon. But if no camera is rendering, how are we going to show our pixelated render text? Well, we can do it with a canvas. If we go to the UI section, we can create a raw image. And in there, which I'm going to rename to pixelated raw image. And in here, we are going to assign the pixelated render texture that we just created. And it seems like nothing has changed. But if we have a look to the bottom left corner, here's the render texture. So all we gotta do now is make sure that this raw image occupies the whole screen. And we can do it up here in the anchor presets while holding Alt. We wanna click on the center, so it snaps to the center. And then still while holding Alt, we wanna click down here on this bottom right corner. It will extend the image to occupy the entire display. And here we go, the scene is pixelated. Now if we go back to the render text, we can control the pixelated amount in the size. For example, 128 by 128. Oh, and make sure that in filter mode there is point. The pixels will become crisp. And make sure anti-aliasing is set to none, otherwise they become smooth, the pixels. It's actually a personal taste. But yeah, as you can see, if I move around with my camera, everything is pixelated and that's so cool. And so easy to set up. And yes, I have a global volume, by the way, with a vignette assigned. That's why the corners are black. I'm gonna show you in a moment how to create one. For now, let's see how to apply a shader to the entire screen so we can finish our retro effect. So make sure that you find your forward renderer. If you don't know what it is, you can go to edit and in project settings. In graphics, you can click here and it will tell you where the universal render pipeline asset is and up here in the render list we have the forward renderer. Once you find it, you want to make sure that we add the render feature a bleed. And you probably don't have a bleed in your project because this is a script created by Cyan, a great graphic technical artist. You actually don't need to download this entire package, we only need the bleed script. You can enter here and if you click on this icon you will copy the whole file once you copy the wall file, you can go back to Unity and with right click, you want to create a C Sharp script. I already have one and then you can paste everything to that script and press Ctrl S to save. Once you go back to Unity, this will basically add a scriptable render pass. And now if you go back to our forward renderer, whenever we try to add a render feature, here we go, we have the bleed. We can name this the retro bleed. But the most important part is the fact that we can add a material to this bleed, as you can see. So now we are ready to create the shader. So with right click, we can create a blank shader graph or an unlit shader graph. I'm gonna go with blank shader graph and rename this to retro shader tooth. Double click to open it up. And in the graph inspector, we need to tell it this is going to be for, and it's the universal one. We can say this is unlit and now this shader requires two things, some scanning lines and a bit of noise. The scanning lines is the hardest part, so let's start with that. We want a UV node 
because if we split it, we get access to a gradient. We want to use the green channel, the G channel, because it has an horizontal row of black pixels and gray pixels. As you can see with the multiply node, now the trick is to connect this to a fraction node. It will repeat certain part of the previous text. And if we play with the B of the multiply, as you can see, we control the scanning lines. So that's an important property that we want to control. Let's create a float for that with a default value of 7. As you can see, this is a gradient, the fraction. There is a very simple thing we can do to turn it into black and white, which is connect it to a step node. It will basically round up according to this value. It's a threshold. We want to set it to 0 0.23. But before we test this out, as you can see, it's static. And it would be cool if we could animate this. So, after the multiply, if we connect this to an add node, if we play with the B option, up and down, as you can see, it's moving. We simply need to connect a time property here, so it animates the scroll. And if we multiply the time with a certain value, we can basically with a float property called the scanning line speed with a default value of 1. Well, that means that we can basically control the speed of the scanning lines, as you can see. Let's connect this to the base color of the fragment function to test things out. Don't forget to press the save asset button. The way this works now is by creating a material out of this shader. And if we select the forward renderer, we can now assign that material to the bleed. But as you can see, it's tripping. We only see white lines and our scenario is gone. And then it doesn't paint on the sky. Mostly because we are overriding the render pipeline. But we need to tell it when it will override. And we want to override this, which is the event, by the way after rendering the transparent and not after rendering the opaques. Otherwise, it will only apply the lines to opaque objects. So after rendering transparent, and here we go, it occupies the entire screen. Obviously, we don't see anything else because in our shader, we need to control the amount of scanning lines we want, the intensity. We can do it with a lerp node a linear interpolation. The T value will blend between A and B options. As it gets closer to B, it becomes white, and to zero, it becomes black. Which means that what we have now is great to connect to the B option. It's the scanning lines with full power, basically. But to the A option, we need to connect our scene without any scanning lines. Thankfully, we have a node that represents what the camera is rendering. And it's the scene color node which is perfect to connect to the A option. We can connect this to the base color, and now we simply need to create a float for the scanning lines amount, which is going to be a slider between 0 and 1, and we can connect it to the T. If we save this, and if we select our material, the scanning lines amount, by the way, it's going to be super low, as you can see, like 0 0.00. .00 5, for example. We just want to add a little detail. And yes, you can also control the amount of scanning lines and at which speed they scroll. So yeah, it's looking pretty cool. But we can do more. For example, these scanning lines, they should be blinking. It will look a little bit better if we can make them blink from time to time, randomly. So if we go back to the shader now, well, we need to start with the time node. But this time, we are going to use the sign time. A lot of time going on here. And if you connect this to a sign node, it may seem like nothing happens or is too slow, but if we multiply this sign time by a value of 10, we get this crazy blinking black and white square. We could connect this to the step, but it would simply turn off and on the scanning lines. Instead, we can remap and say that the zeros that come in, they are going to be 0 0.6. This way we clamp everything below 0 0.6 and instead of turning off and on the scanning lines, we will make them less or more intense. Now, all we gotta do is multiply all of this together. And here we go. We have some blinking scanning lines. You can control the speed 
back here, by the way, in the multiply. Yeah, but I'm gonna leave it at 10 or 15. As you can see, it adds a really nice touch. It's a cool detail. Another detail that we can add is some noise to this. Random noise. We are going to use a simple noise for that. And out of the box, we need a few properties. The first one, well, is the noise amount. Then another float for the noise scale. And lastly, a vector 2 for the noise speed. So the noise amount, it's going to be a slider between 0 and 1. It's going to have the same function as the scanning lines amount. The noise scale, let's try 100 and see how it goes. Let's connect it down here. And, well, for the noise speed, we need to first, we can drag it as well, but we need the time node multiplied with the noise speed. And we need to connect this to a tiling and offset node more specifically to the offset part, so it can scroll, just like this. And finally, to put all of this together, we are going to once again use a lerp node. After this lerp, the B option is going to be for the simple noise at full power, and the A option is, well, what we have now, the scanning lines. And the T is going to be controlled by the noise amount. And then replace this to the base color. You can also rearrange this, double click on the line to create this notch. Save the asset and if we go back to our material, we can play with the noise amount. And once again, this works really well in tiny values, like 0 0.02, something like that. The scale is actually not that bad, 100, but the speed it could be slower, like 0 0.05 or or even less. Awesome. Last thing we are going to do is add color to this. It's very simple. After all of these lerp nodes, we can multiply, we can create a color property and then multiply with the lerp nodes. For the color, we can choose a white as default, alpha to 100. You can set it to HDR, but you are probably not going to use the intensity controller. So yeah, multiply it like this, replace to the base color, and here we go. We can now, for example, I'm gonna give you my values for the green, which is 109 for the U and 43 for the saturation. You can obviously try different colors, but a green retro feeling is always on point. Lastly, if you want some vignette and other post-processing effects, with right-click in your scene, you can create a global volume down here in the volume and then create a new profile on the new button and then simply add a vignette, for example, like this one. And the cool thing is that we can add down here, for example, a lens distortion. And if you start increasing this, you create a fish eye effect. And that is awesome for the retro feeling. Because of the old monitors, it gets really that feeling very close to what it was. Really nice stuff. Now, if I play this and move around, as you can see, this looks awesome and the retro feeling is, I think, on point. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed. If you want to get your hands on this project, it's all available on my Patreon page, links below. And I want to take this moment to appreciate each Patron for supporting this month. You guys rock! And a quick shout out to the top tier Patrons, which are Adrian Briedzriki, Arctic Prototype, Elak Frost, Austin Schneider, Avia Tobali, Bao Yen, Burak Yeni, Kruby Dubidu, Diego Marques, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Kissy Miller, Leonard Ferraz, Lutuli, Levin W, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Oscar Itaminen, Pokey, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Toasted Butter, Very Suta, and Water Bridge. Thank you all for your support, you guys are amazing. I hope you have enjoyed the retro shader, the retro feeling, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.